what was life like on the PT boats? Uh, life was was very informal on the on the PT boat. Uh, uh, we were uh, 14 men uh, there together on a, on a small boat. Uh, we uh, we had to get along. Uh, we couldn't. Uh, it wasn't a place for uh, individuals uh, on there. Uh, we had to. Uh, uh, do our own particular job, and we had to know the jobs of, of several of the other uh, people. Now, I was a torpedo man on the boat, but I also um, manned uh, a 37 millimeter gun on, in general quarters. So, uh, uh, I can say we we had to know our own particular job and and uh, uh, be uh, familiar with the work of the other rates on the boat as well. Is that where you learned how to cook? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, we had a cook aboard the, the boat, but uh, we didn't. Uh, it was just a very small galley, and uh, uh, most of our meals came from uh, either from a tender or from a shore base uh, rather than uh, cooking meals on the boat. So. Where did you patrol? Um, I got on the boat uh, at uh, a base called Windy Island off of the uh, uh, north coast of New Guinea. And uh, I didn't make any patrols uh, there, but the uh, uh, boat uh, went up to the Philippines for the invasion of the Philippines. Our whole squadron and, and two other squadrons went, uh, uh, went underway from Dutch New Guinea uh, to uh, Lady Gulf, and uh, the first patrol that I made, the first combat patrol that I made, was the Battle of Sargao Straits and in, in the Battle of Lady Gulf. So uh, then we patrolled uh, around the island of Lady and, and south to uh, uh, Mindanao uh, from uh, the uh, base there in and lady. Uh, <clears throat> what happened? Well, uh, we started out on patrol, uh, usually uh, would leave uh, in the late uh, afternoon, or early evening. And ordinarily we had uh, uh, air cover when we were going out and would have air cover returning after daylight uh, in the morning. But uh, the uh, Jap planes hadn't been uh, uh, very active for a while, so this uh, uh, evening on the 10th of December, 44, we started out without uh, air cover. And as luck would have it, we were jumped by uh, four Japanese planes. And uh, one of them uh, made a suicide dive on our boat and managed to hit it. And you can see in the picture that the plane went right straight through the boat. And uh, uh, cut the hit over the, uh, the cockpit area and where the officers were and both officers were, were killed. And, uh, like I said, I manned a 37 millimeter gun. I was, was up on the bow here, uh, myself and a gun loader. When that plane hit, it was like somebody jumping on a springboard or something. We just went sailing off like we'd been shot from a catapult. Uh, uh, I don't know how high in the air I went, but high enough that I could see the wreckage of the boat below, and I hoped that I would miss it when I landed in the water, which I did. But uh, the, the gun loader was, was with me, and... Uh, he uh, lit close to me, and I had my uh, life jacket and helmet on because we had test fired the guns shortly before that, and I had, didn't, didn't uh, take my uh, life jacket off. So uh, uh, this uh, gun loader landed fairly close to me, and I got a hold of him and hung on to him because uh, he, he didn't have a life jacket. And I hung on to him until we were picked up by uh, you know, the other boat from our squadron who was with us. So we were in the water probably 15 or 20 minutes or so before we got picked up. Wow. Um, 
all the, all the movies that have been made. They were expendable. Um, PT one oh nine. PT one oh nine. How accurate were how accurate were those portrayals? Uh, faces of them, parts of them were fairly accurate. Uh, others, uh, they uh, took quite a bit of liberty with uh, what the boats did and how they performed and so on. Uh, 109, and uh, the one particular thing about that was that they uh, showed uh, Kennedy uh, taking control of the boat and saying that uh, the boat was in bad shape and he had to get it uh, repaired one night before he could go on patrol, which was not true. Uh, uh, Bryant Larson, uh, who was the skipper of 109, immediately prior to Kennedy's taking, he turned the boat over to Kennedy. Uh, he lived here in Portland for a, a number of years. Uh, I, I talked and visited with him. He said that it was absolutely not true that the boat was in, in good operating condition when Kennedy took it. So, uh, that, that was one of uh, the things in particular that uh, I know was, was not right. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a rivalry between the guys that were assigned to Elko's and the guy that were assigned to Higgins? Uh, to a degree, but not uh, nothing uh, really uh, serious. If you'd uh, served uh, mainly on a, on a Higgins boat, while well, you kind of was partial to Higgins boat. Uh, I served on uh, on a Elko boat uh, overseas and. Uh, uh, was assigned to a new squadron of Yoko boats. It was the last squadron that was commissioned. And I also uh, served for a short time on the Higgins boat in, the, in Squadron 4, the training squadron at uh, Melville, Rhode Island. And uh, there really wasn't that much difference. The, uh, the motors were goofy. <laughs> yeah, there was, uh, the Higgins boats were a little... Uh, uh, whether they, they ship more water over the over the bow and, and rough water, uh, but they uh, could turn a lot uh, sharper. They had uh, much larger rudders than the uh, Elko boats. They could turn uh, a lot uh, uh, sharper than the than the Elko boats could. So uh, there was there was you know advantages and disadvantages to both boats. I have one more question, but I got to change the tape first. Yeah. Just sit tight. Um, I was uh, just uh, interested in it. I had uh, um, been uh, interested when I found out that they were bringing a boat uh, to Portland for a Rose Festival and uh, uh, went out and watched them unload it and so on when they uh, moved the boat to uh, uh, Clackamas. That they, um, Reserve Center out there, and uh, uh, I, uh, being retired, I didn't uh, uh, have a lot of commitments to, uh, so I was I had time to uh, to work on it and, and got started and couldn't stop. <laughs> I asked this of the I asked this of the other guy I talked to today. It doesn't make sense. You served on the boat for a year and a half. And you spent twenty fixing one up. <laughs> no, that don't seem to me be too sensible. But uh, like I say, when it once you got started, I uh, uh, just had to keep going. Are you worried that after you and your friends are gone, um, that without artifacts of the Second World War, that history will rewrite it? Uh. I'm not, uh, I'm not really worried about it, but uh, uh, there is also some concern, uh, you know, about when we're gone, uh, who's going to look after uh, the boat and, and the uh, artifacts and, and so on. Uh, I hope that, uh, that uh, some of these uh, younger volunteers that we had will continue their interest uh, uh, in the boat and, and uh, help out that uh, way until there's some kind of a transition. How important is it to preserve 
little touchable pieces of history. Uh, I mean, you know, this. I know they're trying to get the air rescue boat up here and generate some kind of benefactor or some kind of funds or organization to help take care of it. And, you know, you've got the South Carolina down in uh, uh, Huntington, and you've got the World War II vintage Texas sitting in Houston. Um, you know, you've got a couple, of, you've got a sub in Philadelphia from World War II. So you've got a lot of stuff around from that era. How important is it to, to the future generations to keep it? What, well, will, what will it tell people a hundred years from now when World War II is just some war that old people fought uh, a long time ago? Will those artifacts help retell the story? Um, I think that they will, yes. Uh, uh, a lot of the uh, pictures and whatnot uh, that uh, we have that are uh, preserved will uh, help uh, uh, Anybody that's uh, that's uh, interested in in any kind of history of the of the country uh, would uh, benefit by uh, having uh, those things to uh, observe and, and learn from. Uh, I, I think it's important that these uh, these things uh, uh, be preserved so that uh, future generations will will know. Uh, uh, the sacrifice you made. Yeah, what, what happened uh, uh, before them and so on. Uh, I think most young people today have no idea. Uh, that's true. Uh, we we learn. Uh, uh, you guys never said much about it. That's the problem. <laughs> you were too stoic. Yeah, I, I suppose that's, uh, that's a legitimate uh, uh, criticism, all right. We... Uh, a lot of us uh, didn't talk uh, about it. You yeah, uh, pulled the Gary Cooper on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> well, um, is it worth the donation to help keep uh, the group uh, going then? I mean, is this something you encourage people to come do, see when they're in Portland? Um, I don't know that we've had a, a lot of, of uh, people uh, that uh, weren't uh, associated with uh, PT or something. We've had a lot of people that were, uh, you know, the family, somebody in the family had uh, uh, served on PT, that come from other parts of the country that have visited. But uh, otherwise, uh, uh, most of the uh, visitors are, are local uh, people and school uh, uh, classes. We've had uh, uh, a number of, uh, of well, you, you uh, got, high school. You've got one that had no connection with PT boats. My dad was an Army Air Corps guy. Oh. I, but, uh, boy, when I heard of this, I just said, yeah. i got to go do a story. So yeah. thank you for your time. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell TV Land out there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. Uh, uh, Still uh, being stoic, aren't you? Yeah. Do you get a sense of pride when you hear those old Packards fire up and rumble out of the harbor still? Does yeah. It, does it make you feel younger? No, it don't make me feel younger, no. That's what he said, too. <laughs> no. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's got the... Uh, to uh, thing and, and see the boat underway and so on. Uh, and uh, no, because we started in on this uh, job, there was, there was all kinds of people that said that uh, that boat will never be back in the water again. So uh, it, it does our heart good to see the thing uh, underway and, and know that those, those people were wrong. <laughs>